Hey, what's up y'all? Greg Gray here with Outdoor Solutions Long Range Shooting Schools and from fieldtotable.com. I've got a completely different one here for you guys today. Uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. So here's what I've done. It's the end of the year. It is December 30th on a Saturday. Obviously I'm at the range. And what I've done is for the last um, two weeks, I went through a lot of y'all's comments and questions here on our YouTube channel and thought I would answer some of the questions and address a couple of the comments. So we're going to cover uh, from why using a MOA or a mill reticle is better than just learning your drops or your holdovers. Uh, we're going to um, cover how we get our MOA, how we get our adjustments out at different yardages that is using a ballistic app and and then the last one, there was a question about magnification uh, affecting your zero. So those are the three things that we're going to cover and we're gonna get right into it right now. The first one was a comment that came from Jeff Hayes, 1968. Uh, this again is on YouTube. And his was really more of a comment uh, than a question. And I get what he was saying, um, but he was talking about just utilizing your reticle uh, versus um, your reticle with a straight duplex versus using a reticle with your measurements in it. And he had made a comment of knowing your drops or knowing your ballistics, which 100% you should know your ballistics and know what your drops are, but you can still do that exact same thing with a reticle that has an MOA in it. Now, on this example, I am using our Zeiss Conquest V4 6 to 24, which is what we use in our long range classes. And it has uh, basically what is called a Christmas tree reticle in it. And so it has your windage uh, holds on it and then it also has elevation holds so you have the option of, of either dialing for your elevation or using your reticles in this video obviously we're talking about using your reticles so here's where the difference is what I'm going to do I've also got my uh, Tacticam FTS uh, hooked up here to uh, my Zeiss but we also hooked it up to another optic that just has that straight reticle and what Jeff's uh, comment was is instead of using uh, your measurements as a crutch know your drops well you can do both so whenever you're using a reticle let's look at this through the FTS and I am just hand holding this by the way um, uh, I don't have it mounted to a rifle so it's not super steady but you kind of get the idea and he says well if you know what your drops are and he used the example of 12 inches it looks a whole lot different at 200 yards than it does at 600 yards than it does at 800 yards so the examples I'm going to give you here you're going to see a uh, mule deer that is right at 300 yards yards and then you're going to see a bear that is at almost 600 yards and then a bison that is um, at a little over 800 yards again I'm hand holding this with the FTS hooked up to it and it didn't fit perfectly but you'll kind of get the idea and guessing what 12 inches looks like is completely different at those different yardages so why not use uh, a, a reticle system that actually gives you your measurements so that you're not guessing. So let's look through the FTS here on the V4. This is a second focal plane uh, optic. And I am basically at the same magnification on the one that I showed you with just the straight duplex, that was at 15 uh, magnification. Now I'm at 15 here. And so now I know that with this particular rifle, we find that mule deer, that that mule deer is, I need a hold of four MOA. So I know that at basically half power, that I just need to go to that second mark. So you can see the uh, end of the crosshairs and then you can see that first hash mark that at half power is 4MOA. So I know exactly where to hold versus guessing. And then the same if we were to go to 600 yards there on that bear. There you can see I have a reference of where to hold on the vitals. Or if we go to almost 800 yards on that bison, I've got a reference point. So 
My point is, it's not a crutch. It makes you a more ethical hunter, and it gives you a reference point of where to hold whenever you're shooting at an animal at different distances. So nothing wrong with a straight duplex if you're not going to shoot out very far. If you're not shooting beyond 200 yards, they're great. They're not as busy, but if you wanna be more accurate, use a reticle that has multiple hold points and has windage hold points as well. So that's that one. The next one is going to be on does man magnification matter whenever you zero? The short answer is no, it does not. All right, so what we'll do here, um, my closest target that I have is 200 yards. So we'll just say that silhouette target right there so right now I am at 12 power and if I wanted to zero at 200 yards it doesn't matter if I'm on 12 power if I'm on 6 power or if I want to max this out at 24 power the crosshair is always the same. The subtension on it does not change because it is always in the center. Where it matters on a second focal plane optic is if you're starting to use those hash marks below or above or your windage. But whenever you go to zero your rifle, it does not matter. For me personally, I max it out just so that I can see my impact. Maybe I don't need to use my spotting scope or I don't have it with me. That's just a preference for me. Other than that, I'm backing my magnification off. A lot of times I'll shoot a thousand yards with, on only 12 uh, magnification or 50% power when I'm using this six to 24 on the, on the Zeiss V4. So, but that's just a personal preference. So but anyway, uh, appreciate you uh, writing that question in or sending it through uh, YouTube. Uh, whenever you go to do your zero, it, it flat out doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter whether that's on second focal plane or on first focal plane, your center will always be center. All right, so this last one's gonna take us a little bit to set up, and it is um, about how do we know what our MOAs are at different distances. And the way that I understood the question was like, how do I know that with this particular rifle at 300 yards, I need to hold or dial four minutes? And that's because of the ballistic app that we use we input data into this ballistic app and it gives us data back. Basically, it's doing all the math for us at whatever distance, um, whatever distance that we want to dial up. It doesn't matter. Um, there's a lot of good ballistic apps out there. We use two. When I'm out hunting, I'm primarily using uh, the Zeiss hunting app. And that is because I pair it with my Zeiss um, uh, Victory RS, and these are range finding binos. So what I'm able to do with them is program them through the app, and uh, I can actually load uh, nine different um, uh, rifle ammunition combos in here and then I can just switch them out through the app or I can actually do it through the binos as well I actually just do it through the app and so then whenever I go to range something like right now I range that uh, that mule deer at 300 yards because I have my 6.5 Creedmoor using a 140 grain match bullet it tells me I need to dial up four minutes that's one that I have memorized or if I go out to a thousand yards it tells me that I need to dial up 29 minutes. Um, so that's the app that I use whenever I'm hunting, but whenever we're teaching our long range shooting classes, we are using one called Geo Ballistics, and I'm going to share my screen with you on my phone and just show you the basic information that we input to get our information back out so that we know at each distance what MOA or mil, whichever you wanna do, um, that we need to dial or hold. All right, so as far as um, the data that you want to enter in, the GeoBallistic app will ask for some very specific information, which most of them do, and so that's what we're going to go through. So this is obviously on my personal phone, and I've got a, a whole slew of rifles in here, but you go to um, rifles, and then if you want to add a rifle, obviously you can click on, um, you know, click on rifle to add another one. But here you can see where it says my rifles, and I just do a drop down, and you can see. Uh, 
uh, all the different rifles that I currently have in there. So right now we'll just go with the one that I already have checked, which is with my Benelli Lupo in 6.5 Creedmoor. And I usually put the ammo in there, like you can see, actually we'll back up here. You can see there I've got Fusion in this one. This one I didn't put any of the ammo in. Um, some of the others, uh, uh, burger, uh, do different ones, but we'll go with the one I already have highlighted. Uh, you can do the three dots, click on edit. And now this has all the information that I have already put in uh, to get my data back. So one of the first things that you're going to do is what caliber. So for 6.5 Creedmoor, same as a 264 what uh, weight grain bullet. I'm using a 140 grain bullet. And also, uh, by the way, too, you can actually do a uh, search and here you can see all uh, the different weights of bullets uh, for the 6.5 Creed where you can see uh, Burger, Cutting Edge, everything that Federal makes, um, G5, Hornady. Um, Hornady has a, a ton of them, JLK. Lapua, you get the point. There's a lot of different ammo. So what I currently have in there for this one is what we use in our long range shooting classes, which uh, is Barnes Precision Match. It's 140 grain. Um, and once you once you uh, put that one in there, it will automatically put in the bullet length, the drag function. We use G1 uh, in ours, and then it will automatically put in uh, your BC or your ballistic coefficient. Now the next thing, this is going to be on the rifle itself. And the first thing that it asks for is your sight height in inches. So your sight height is from the center of your optic. So you would measure right here to the center of your bore. And if you have an iPhone, you have that measurement uh, function, you can use it, or you can use a, a regular tape, whatever you want to use. Uh, obviously for mine, we've got two inches uh, uh, on my sight height. Uh, my zero range, I put in at 100 yards. That's where we zero all of our um, rifles for our long range shooting schools. Elevation and windage offset, I won't get into that right now. You can see I have that set at zero. A 6.5 Creedmoor, the uh, twist rate, which is how much many um, uh, inches that your uh, bullet will rotate uh, one time. So in a uh, 6.5 Creedmoor, and this is very typical, uh, I am I have a one and eight. So that means that it is twisting one time within eight inches. And then the muzzle velocity, what we start with is what the manufacturer has on the box. Uh, I believe uh, Barnes has 2,700, 2,700 on theirs, but with this actual rifle, I'm actually at 2,655, and in a different video, we can show you how we actually get that. And then we do everything in MOA. You can also do it in mil radian. And then uh, there's some other features in here um, uh, that really doesn't apply to what I'm wanting to do this video for, but that is the basic information that you would put uh, into uh, the, uh, the ballistic app. And then what it will do is give you your data back. So let's go back and see what this data looks like. So now I'm gonna to go to my chart and you can, we can see right here at 100 yards, I'm at zero. And so now, if I want to go out to 200 yards, it's telling me that I need to be up 1.7. So one and three quarters minutes is what that means. I can either hold or I can dial. We go on to 300 yards, I'm at 4.2 minutes. Um, go all the way out to 600 yards, and it's telling me 14.1 um, minutes. And then finally at 1,000, this one's saying 32.6. Uh, Typically that's usually around um, 29. I haven't updated weather. There's a lot of other things that they do. But the point is, I just want to show you how we get the data. We'll do another video uh, and we'll dive deeper into how we utilize this app. But that's how you get your information so that whenever you're at a specific yardage, um, you know what to dial or what to hold. These do all the math for you so that, so that you don't have to. Uh, but anyway, that is a great question. I appreciate you writing in and asking that one. And uh, we look forward to doing more videos like this for you guys. In fact, leave us a comment and let me know um, what you guys
guys would like to see. Uh, we're getting ready to start a new year and we want to do a whole bunch of videos for you guys. So if there's something specific, leave us a comment, let us know, and we'll be more than happy to do them for you. We greatly appreciate you guys. We've grown to over 12,000 subscribers now. I remember when we started at zero and uh, it's all because of you guys and we greatly appreciate that. We appreciate the comments uh, and the questions. So uh, that's all I've got for this one. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.